Disturbing news as a group of pro-life activists from Nashville were recently found guilty in federal court under the FACE Act for quietly and peacefully protesting outside a local abortion clinic. Here's a little snippet of that protest from March of 2021. The FACE, or Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, makes it illegal to block access to abortion clinics. The protesters each face up to 11 years in jail, three years of supervised release, and a fine of up to $260,000. A little more than a year ago, one of the protesters was arrested in a chilling appearance by the FBI. Watch. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll just- No, I want to know why you were banging on my door with a gun. You're not going to tell me anything? No, do not. I, you, I, I tried. Man. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You did not try. Some were quick to point out the seemingly hypocritical nature of arresting peaceful protesters with how far more violent some activists were treated if their causes were more politically aligned with the powers that be. The Daily Wire's Matt Walsh posted a quote from the U.S. attorney on the case who said, quote, Something is not peaceful if laws are broken. Walsh said this was an example of, quote, full-on Soviet-style corruption and persecution. Here now to discuss this story further is senior reporter at The Daily Signal, Mary Margaret Olihan. So Mary Margaret, walk us a little bit through this case. This is, of course, also not the first time that a pro-lifer has been arrested by the Biden G DOJ. You covered the Mark Houck case previously. He ended up being acquitted. But these individuals were found guilty of violating the FACE Act. Tell us a little bit about the protest and what the feds were alleging they did wrong. Well, it's great to be here, Amber. And, and this incident is one of a number of incidents that the DOJ is targeting as crimes violating the FACE Act. And what happened here was these pro-life activists went to an abortion clinic prepared to go and talk to women and tell them why they don't think they should abort their babies. Keep in mind, these pro-life activists believe that abortion is the murder of an unborn child. So that's good context to have here. So they go to the abortion clinic, they pray outside, they sing. They talk to the people that are going in and out. And unfortunately, this is a violation of the Freedom of Access to Abortion Clinic er, to Clinic Entrances Act. And the Biden Department of Justice has specifically said that they're enforcing this act as a response to the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And we have DOJ officials on the record saying that. So after Roe was overturned, we saw multiple different people be arrested in front of their children at gunpoint and brought in and charged with violations of the FACE Act. And this is another example of that. Now, you're right, Amber, people are comparing this to the other different protests around the country. For example, the Black Lives Matter protests involving the death of George Floyd, where many of these people who committed violent crimes were allowed to go free, whereas we see these pro-lifers looking at 11 years in prison. So 11 years sounds, you know, pretty nice compared to the 20 years that the Stop Cop City protesters are facing in Atlanta. 21 were arrested, including those that were there as observers of the protest to see that the law was observed there. They were among the 61 that were arrested and are now facing a penalty of 20 years. It sounds to me like the laws applied pretty evenly. Uh, I, I just can't see how you would say 
that those being charged for blocking entrance to the abortion clinic, a direct violation of the law, is, is somehow the same as BLM protesters who are in the streets. Are you aware of occasions where laws were broken and individuals were not arrested? Well, I think it's important to look at the context here. If you look at what they actually did, and there's a really great video, my friend Greg Price tweeted it, and it shows what happened at this, this so-called protest. These pro-lifers went and were singing and praying outside of an abortion clinic where babies' lives are being ended. Now, you can agree or disagree that abortion is wrong, but you can look at that video and see they are praying, praying and singing for the lives of babies. So it's a little it's a little funny to compare these two incidents and say that perhaps these people deserve 11 years in prison for what they did in that moment. Yeah, and I mean, 14, I think the thousand people were arrested since June 22nd, 2020 in relation to BLM protests across 49 cities. It sounds like, you know, the law was applied pretty evenly. It doesn't seem like a fair comparison to me. Amber, I didn't want to take that away from if you were going to go. Oh, yes. Thank you. I was going to go. So, I mean, I think the comparison would have to be peaceful protest to peaceful protest, right? Because this objectively was a peaceful protest. You can look at the video. You can see them literally just singing and saying prayer. Compared to the BLM people, few who were arrested, a lot of them were not. A lot of them continue to walk free, facing far shorter sentences for actually either engaging in violence against police officers, breaking property, looting, rioting. So I think that's the direct comparison, um, not, uh, you know, you'd have to make a direct comparison of peaceful to peaceful in order for those sentences to be comparable. But um, what I wanted to ask you, uh, Mary Margaret, as well, is that um, the FACE Act also covers places of religious worship. And in the overturning of Roe v. Wade, there were multiple Catholic churches, hundreds actually, that were vandalized. Um, and there were also cases where um, protesters disrupted Catholic masses right here in Washington, D.C. As far as I know, those people have not been arrested or charged. Is that correct? No, and this is really important context as well. In the aftermath of the Dobbs leak, so in May of, I believe, 2022, we have seen hundreds of attacks on pro-life pregnancy centers and churches, which are both protected by the FACE Act as well. Now, as a reporter that covers this, I have for two years now, I guess, been reaching out to the Department of Justice and saying, what happened to these criminals? Like, have you pro prosecuted any of them with the FACE Act? And as of two days ago, I found out that the DOJ has only charged five people, five pro-abortion individuals with attacking pregnancy centers uh, under the FACE Act. So that's five individuals out of 88 attacks. Meanwhile, they have not charged a single individual with FACE Act charges for their attacks on Catholic churches. And there's been over 200 since the Dobbs leak. So with that context, I think when we look at how the DOJ is using the FACE Act, it is very clear that they're only using it to charge pro-abortion or to charge pro-life activists. And, and keep in mind, the pro-life activists being charged were singing and praying outside of abortion clinics, whereas the pro-abortion individuals who have not been charged firebombed abortion or pregnancy centers, firebombed churches, Molotov cocktails, smashing windows, writing, if abortion isn't safe, neither are you. So that discrepancy is, I think, what has a lot of conservatives not and, and middle-of-the-road Americans very upset about what's going on here. So the FACE Act was passed under Bill Clinton. It was a response to death threats, bomb threats, attacks on abortion clinics across the country by pro-life individuals. That's how this law came into place. You know, when I think about people blocking entry to a clinic where women, many pregnant women, are receiving health care, I get a little worried. I think it's a good part of a free society that if someone needs to and wants to go to the doctor, that they should be able to. And so in a case where someone's blocking potentially a woman who needs health care for her baby, for her baby's life, right? These are pro-life protesters. They care about the baby's life. They were praying for it. Accessing that health care seems pretty important for the baby's life. So I don't know. I'm kind of on the side of if, if someone wants to access a health care clinic and there are people preventing them, you know, there should be something done about that. And when I consider, you know, access to health care facilities all in all, we've had this conversation a lot with what's going on in Israel and Palestine. And a lot of people across the globe seem to be on the side of people should be able to access health care facilities when they want to. And I'm just going to quickly go back to that uh, peaceful protest comparison 
many of the arrests during BLM were because people violated the curfews that were set just hours before they were outside. And so, of course, there were arrests for peaceful protests. But I think this one seems to be specifically about accessing the health care clinic. Are you worried at all about moms that were pregnant and their babies not being able to get health care if their clinic where they, you know, get that health care is blocked entrance of? Well, I would agree with you, except that unfortunately, abortion clinics in the United States don't provide care for babies. They exist to abort babies or offer patients transgender care, as the Planned Parenthood clinics would say. So they offer hormones to young people or they offer abortions. Right, just quickly, to animals. This was not a Planned Parenthood. This was Mount Juliet's, which is a family care right. clinic. They do more than abortions. It was not a Planned Parenthood. Uh, Well, they advertise that they do more than abortions, but if you talk to the women that go there, people go there to get an abortion. So I, you know, I think this is often misinformation that we hear that abortion clinics offer care for mothers and babies. Unfortunately, they do not. And the women that go in there are usually offered only one option, which is abortion, or they're given more information on obtaining abortion pills. And uh, so this this really is misinformation that is spread about abortion clinics, that they offer care to mothers and babies. And, uh, you know, a woman going into an abortion clinic is is going to be, you know, the abortion clinic is going to seek to so-called help her, not necessarily her unborn child, who, frankly, is in a lot of danger in an abortion clinic. I would also add just briefly that these individuals were not barring physical access to the door of this clinic. They were collected in the hallway outside of the clinic. And what is happening, I think, is that the FACE Act is being interpreted to punish anyone who uh, who engages in a protest outside of an abortion clinic and being interpreted as being outside of the clinic as somehow impeding access, even though these um, individuals who wanted to go into the center were more than capable of doing so. It's not like they put a chain across the door. So unfortunately, we're out of time, but we'll have to have you back, Mary Margaret. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more Rising after this. Thank you.